Welcome to Ginyan 101, Khai Nghiệp Lam Yao. I'm your host, Tui Fan. When you create a business, not many look ahead to what happens when it's time to plan an exit strategy. Starting is important, but knowing when to move on or sell your business or where it goes next is just as important. Join us as we talk to Ed Hart, the Director of Family Business at Cal State Fullerton, on what you need to know to be ready and how to do good family business. In America, family businesses make up over 70% of small businesses, and that can be both a good and bad thing. Working in a family business, we always talk about how, you know, if any of us come from a family, and most of us do, there's conflict. If any of us have a job, there's typically some conflict there. So when you put the two together, how do we prepare for that conflict? And not that everything about working in family business is conflict related, but certainly when emotions come into play and you're working with family. Uh, we always advise and counsel our students and those that work within the family businesses that we serve to make sure you put your family first. Uh, that's our philosophy, that's my personal philosophy, is that family over business all the time. It means you're working with people you love and trust, but it can also mean a lot of hard decisions. Ed Hart, who's the director of the Center for Family Business at Cal State Fullerton, says the key is making sure there's communication. For me, what I've noticed is the companies that have uh, great similar shared values. So everybody across the board within the family and the company shares a very a similar value system, uh, meaning that they, they value work about the same way they value their community involvement, they value that maybe their church or their other civic organizations that they maybe belong to, that that's consistent. And then the big deal to me, and it's really, this is the answer I think to every relationship is communication. That there's open dialogue and open discussion. I can kind of answer that question with the flip side of what I've seen in companies that don't succeed is communication's not there. Parents assume the kids know they're going to be taking over the business. Kids assume the parents are going to transition it or vice versa. And so when the communication's not there, that's when we see a breakdown. So we take that and we flip it. And we just, not that we want them to over communicate and to be talking about literally everything all day long because you'll never get any work done. But at the same time, communication on those values and communication on the vision for the organization across the generations, I think is critical. Hart says one thing most people don't talk about in family business is succession planning. It's funny because when somebody asks me when should I start talking to my kids about succession planning, my response is always now, <laughs> regardless of they're three years old or 33 years old. And some of that is serious and some of that is, is just joking, but I, I believe you want to expose your kids to the business at an early age. It doesn't mean have them come in at five years old and start filing and, and sweeping the floors necessarily. But talk about it. Talk about it at the dinner table with balance. Again, you want to leave work at work and, and home life at home life. But I think that there should be some balance to gauge the, the level of interest in the children, um, to gauge their, their aptitude. Some kids would really be interested in taking over the business, but maybe it's a law firm and they don't have any legal experience or any desire to have legal experience. Um, so I think it's just a case-by-case -case scenario with your kids is to just, just talk to them about it, find out what their level of interest and what their aptitude is, give them opportunities. Uh, we encourage a lot of the family businesses that we work with to make sure that their children get a good education, that they then go out and get a job somewhere outside the family business so they can learn what it's like to have to create a resume, to learn what it's like to manage people, to work with other people, um, to work their way up the ladder, so to speak, in a company. Because oftentimes what happens, and I know I'm giving you more of an answer than you asked, but oftentimes what happens in a family business, and one of the reasons why there is failure in family-owned companies is the family will just promote their kids because they have the right last name. And so they're just born into that. If you're a Smith, you're going to take over you know, Smith Automotive or whatever the company may be um, without really encouraging them or, or telling them they need to go get an education and some work experience outside the business. Even if the business isn't family owned, succession planning is imperative so you know where the company will go once your role in it ends. Um, we can never be fully prepared. We talk about the law of threes a lot in business. I was just talking about this with a client last night. It's typically going to take you three times as long as you thought. If you're starting a business, it's going to take you three times as long as you thought to get to the revenue figures that you thought you were going to make it's probably going to cost you three times as much money to get there as you thought because there's unforeseen expenses in marketing and taxes and licensing and all these other things that you need to get. And then most likely in the first year, you're going to make about the, a third of the money you thought you were going to make. So go in eyes wide open, prepared to work a lot harder than you thought you were going to have to. I love that people leave their 40-hour-a-week job to go start up a business and end up working 80 hours a week for half the money. 
but they do it because they have the passion and they see the vision of this growing forward and there's the, there's the opportunity on the horizon that may not exist where they currently are. So I think that's why a lot of people start a business, even though they, they like you said, they may not know what they don't know because they've never done it. It's like anything, first time you climb a mountain, you're, you have no idea what's on the other side of that next peak until you get there and you see it and you have to suddenly prepare for it. All organizations, no matter their size, need succession planning. To do so, set a strategic plan that identifies the organization's vision, mission, and values. These are vital elements in determining future staffing needs. Next, create an inventory of existing skill sets. Assessing your employees is an integral part of succession planning. You need to know what storehouse of skills and knowledge you already have in-house. Then you can determine what gaps exist compared to your personnel plans and go from there. Next, ask people where they would like to be. In open, transparent succession, you invite employees to privately talk about their preferred future roles within your company. An honest conversation assists both of you in realistic ways. Next, evaluate each person's future potential. While people may tell you where they prefer to be assigned, you need to determine whether or not this is truly practical. Each employee's current skills, their motivation level, and ability to adapt and grow must be taken into account. Next, inform employees of their succession potential. Tell high potentials that they're ripe for the fast track. Faulty logic can drive companies to withhold information about an employee's potential. They fear that disappointed staff who are not high potential will run for the door, or that high potential employees will act overly entitled. High potential employees need to be told about their status or they will likely explore other options. Next, groom according to skill sets, desired trajectory, and potential. Performance management should be geared to helping employees reach their maximum potential. After each succession planning conversation, managers should have a list of gaps that must be closed to ensure succession can take place. Finally, offer retention programs that help ensure key staff will stay. Succession planning isn't effective if your employees leave prematurely. All that training and potential walking out the door is cause for concern. You can minimize the risk of unplanned departures by motivating your staff to stay. Houston Councilman Steve Lee says families in the Vietnamese community can plan for succession by encouraging their children in areas that they may help later on. Riêng ở bên Mỹ này nó hay một cái là người nào mà có cái sáng kiến hay sáng kiến tốt đưa ra đầu tiên là người đó sẽ thành công. Thì mình phải suy nghĩ là nếu mà cái mục đích của mình thành lập ra một cái mom and pop store để mà nuôi cho con cháu sau này học và có một cái nghề nghiệp vững bền thì ok thì như vậy thì mình là chấm dứt sau cái đời của mình là mình chấm dứt mình không có làm thêm còn hả nếu mà mình muốn cho con cái mình nó tiếp tục cái con đường của mình à, chẳng hạn như đây là nhà hàng Kim Sơn rất là thành công thì hồi đó là hai bác Kim Sơn bác Tám á, là có một cái nhà hàng bán lunch buffet rất là nho nhỏ gần trong tại dưới phố này nhưng mà khuyến khích cho con gái đi học rồi lại khuyến khích con cái đi học về cái ngành hospitality để mà sau này trở lại làm một cái hệ thống Kim Sơn à, thì gia đình của Kim Sơn khi mà con cái học xong rồi trở về lấy những cái kiến thức mà đã học uh, hospitality ở tại, uh, tại, tại trường University of Houston để mà thành lập những cái nhà hàng Kim Sơn và cái cách điều hành theo người Mỹ Thành ra cái cách service, cái cách bus boy, cái cách cook, cái cách menu, tất cả những cái gì ở trong nhà hàng đó nó đều có một cái phương pháp, một cái policy, nó theo một cái hệ thống. Thành ra gia đình Kim Sơn rất thành công để mà truyền xuống cho con cái của mình. Thành ra không phải là không làm được, nhưng mà cái chiều hướng của mình mình muốn làm sao? Nếu bây giờ mình muốn cái tiệm nail của mình, nó thành công mà nó theo một cái phương pháp nào đó nó có manager nó có những người làm những người này kia nọ thì mình phải khuyến khích để mà con cái mình nó trước hết là nó phải thích cái ngành đó và khuyến khích cho nó vào cái ngành đó thứ nhì là mình phải có một cái policy và một cái procedure nào đó để cho con cái mình nó theo dõi nó theo cách nó học để mà có thể nó phát triển nhiều hơn Succession planning is essential whether or not it is a family business, but according to Hart, families need to remember to hire not because of ties, but for skills. But really, if you look at the companies that thrive, they are promoting the right people who are the most qualified. And uh, while emotionally that might be difficult, oftentimes because they are your kids and you created this for them in many cases, the companies that really do well are the ones that are promoting the right person who's the most qualified for the job and the kids really need to earn their way into that position. Like I mentioned before, get the education, get the experience. The question I'll ask a family business leader at times is, 
if she wasn't your daughter, would she be in this position, or if he wasn't your son? Um, and really, that's 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 kind of the barometer to ask in these family businesses. Would you promote them or place them in that slot if they weren't family? And if the answer is no, then my belief, and again, easier said than done, is to give them the time and the opportunity to get the education and the experience, and that's why going outside sometimes works. Coming up after the break, find out how a love story put crawfish on the map. Stay with us.